Looking for an easier, more efficient, and faster way to smooth out all your 3D prints? I've got some tips and tricks and a great video for you in today's tutorial, so come check it out. Hey, what's up everyone, back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dad, fresh off that giveaway. Congratulations to the winner, Mr. Fred Jones. But today's video, what we are gonna be talking about is efficient ways to smooth out your 3D prints. Today's video, we're gonna kind of recap, use a lot of products that we've used in the past, but I'm gonna dig in a little bit deeper, give you guys a little bit more explanation, and actually show you a new method, and show you the whole process, six to seven hours total, dry time, everything total. Got this thing completely smooth, um, looking great, ready for paint. So I'm gonna go through the whole process, show you the products that I use, explain to you some do's and don'ts. Let's get right into the video. I'm gonna show you the model here. Uh, use Mystery Maker's uh, Boba Fett file. So I'm gonna show you my whole process. Sit back, enjoy the video. Come along for the ride. All right, so starting off with Boba, do all of the uh, smaller pieces here. Uh, using Overture Echo PLA. So far, a pretty awesome PLA. Uh, these were all printed at 0.2 layer height, and they actually came out really, really, really good. Um, very smooth. I'm going to hit them with my palm sander. I'm going to use 180. Uh, I'm going to hit it with a couple coats of Bondo Filler Primer, and then I'm going to go over it with 220, and then probably hand sand it down real quick with 320 and see how they look. So I'm going to get the palm sander fired up, get these sanded down, and show you how they look. All right, so uh, post-sanding inspection started off in all of these little corners here um, on some of these more intricate ones. And I realized I wasn't really going to be able to get the machine in here. So I actually uh, did 120 by hand and just tried to get in all these corners real good. And then I hit the all these pieces here with the 180 on the palm sander, and then took that same 180, just kind of got in all these little crevices here. I was optimistic. I was hoping I could just do a filler primer, but upon further inspection, when you have lines like this, you're gonna have to do a lot of, I don't wanna say a lot with the filler primer, but probably two to three rounds of filling, sanding, filling, sanding, filling, which to me is just, time wasted there's some areas here that are they have some some dips and some peaks and some valleys you can see here this is this was printed like this so you've got that typical um really rigid feel here you know and it's not smooth and you could sit here and try to sand it but understand if you take too much of that that wall off that shell um it could compromise the integrity you know of this this isn't super super thick these were printed with 10 or 12 percent infill you don't want to sand that down too much to where you start warping the model and whatnot so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to take my plastic metal i'm a big fan of that and just anywhere where there's just you can hear how it's just it's sanding it didn't do much so i'm just going to take some filler put that over there go around and look at a couple other spots maybe on the edges and where I do the filler, I'm gonna go back over it with my 120 and 180, but all these I'm just gonna hit up with some glazing putty and then sand them down with 220, then I can get into the filler primer. So I'm gonna get all these prepped and I'm gonna show you how they look and show you the process. So here applying the Bondo plastic metal, this is a pre-mixed filler and filler, like I stated, is best for deep imperfections that maybe won't sand out or something that's too deep for glazing putty. So pre-mixed, um, using a spreader here, you can also use maybe a latex or a nitrile glove and just spread it with your finger. Um, but basically just put it on. Um, this is a filler, so it hardens in about 30 minutes and then you can go ahead and sand it. Uh, here the glazing putty, uh, similar method, I'm just using a spreader. You can also use a glove if you want. Um, the glazing putty is really meant for, you know, hairline cracks or sanding marks or pinholes, things like that. So that's something that a lot of mistake a lot of people will do is they'll, a deep defect, they'll use a putty when you should be using a filler and vice versa. Sometimes when people have light imperfections, they use a filler and that's really not always needed. That can really slow your process down. So here filling in these PLA lines, doing this glazing putty application, this will probably save you three or four rounds of applying a filler primer and sanding going back and forth, back and forth. So this really does speed up the process. It sands down very easy. I've talked about this product numerous times in my videos. I absolutely love it. I prefer it over using resin. It dries faster. It's not messy. You're not fighting gravity. So it's really a great piece. Like I said, you can sand it in about 30 
to 45 minutes tops. If you apply it lighter, you can sand it even quicker. If you do apply it too heavy, don't be afraid. Um, just let it dry for a little bit longer and then just make sure you're knocking off that residual and you'll be good to go. But here I apply all this, let it sit for about 30, 45 minutes and then attack it with some 220. All right, starting off, Boba Dome. Gonna start sanding this thing down. So we can see here, uh, this is Mystery Maker's file, the Boba Fett. 0.24 layer height. Obviously there's some stuff going on with the dome. Uh, some body filler will take care of that. I am doing the dented version. It shouldn't be too much sanding. I didn't go crazy on the infill on this. Uh, I only did 10%, uh, so we don't wanna go too, too heavy with the sanding because we don't want to break down those shells. But I am using my palm sander here. Uh, always very important when you're doing a palm sander, you don't want to go super, super aggressive. So if you're one of those uh, who like to start off at 60 or 80, understand that using a palm sander, it's going to increase that grittiness by two to three times. It's also going to generate a lot more heat. The grittier you go, the more surface tension there is, the more chance there are you're going to generate more heat, okay? So this is only 180. That's usually as heavy as I go with the palm sander, okay? Very important, especially on dome surfaces, you want to make sure you have some sort of squishy interface because you don't want this being completely flat because you'll just gum up the top. So this has a little bit of squish and you'll be able to, I'll be able to move it and kind of contour it around the top and get some of these layer lines knocked down. Uh, this is going to have some plastic metal, some filler, body filler on the top here just because we won't be able to get rid of that. So I'm not going to really worry about knocking this stuff down on the first shot. This is just to get some of those layer lines knocked down and see where we're at. Got my respirator here just so I'm not sniffing in any dust. I'm going to get doing some sanding and get these layer lines knocked down. So again, as stated with the palm sander, uh, always keep it moving, you know, don't go too too heavy, too gritty, you know, 60, 80, you're really rolling the dice starting that low. You could end up compromising the integrity of the print, gumming it up, weakening the walls and the shell and, you know, the, the, the whole structure of the helmet. On top of losing definition, you know, uh, crisp, straight edges will end up getting rounded off you'll lose form of the print and it's just it, you're really better off just starting it somewhere 160 180 is a sweet spot it helps knock the pla lines down it won't round off or gum up your print uh, don't force it in areas that it won't fit just take your time and then whatever you can't get just hit the rest up by hand all right so we've got a, a decent sand in on uh on boba here and really all this is to do is just to kind of knock down, you know, some of those lines. You don't want to try, you're just not gonna be able to get, you know, you try to do this, you're gonna potentially round off or burn an edge here. There's really no easy way, you know, to do this. If you, if you hit it right like here, you could potentially knock this down and lose that definition. So all this is gonna really have to be done by hand. This is probably gonna need, probably two to three sands by hand and then some glazing putty. So this is what's really gonna take the longest in here. I didn't worry about because that's gonna be covered. Um, all these little intricate areas here, I'm gonna go through and, and basically touch up, get all these extra supports and all this trash off here. Here is gonna be done by hand because you can't get a machine in there. So I'm gonna go through and get all that done here. This is definitely gonna need some filler. Uh, for the most part, most of these areas here, this is just gonna need glazing putty. So uh, we're gonna get on to the next process here, cleaning up these edges. Uh, sanding this down and getting some body filling on some of the spots on boba. Hey, what's, up? what's up? Darkwing Z in the house. What's up? What are you showing me? Look, Flippy be tired. And then Flippy be tired. He retired? Yeah. Flippy be tired. Flippy be tired? Flippy be tired, y'all. You came out to see the Mando bucket. You didn't say what's up to your number one fan? Oh, yeah. What's up, T-Jones? Yo, T-Jones. Shout out number two. Your number one fan right here, right? He wants to see a Black Panther Iron Man mashup suit. So we're going to have to make it like we were talking. Vibranium, real vibranium. I'm going to Wakanda tomorrow, you wanna to come? Yeah. All right, well, after we finish this helmet, we'll go to Wakanda. Okay. You coming to help? You wanna help, you wanna stand? You wanna, get it. Get that cheek. I don't feel like doing it. Yes, keep going. 
Good job. Does it look better? Yeah. All right, say all done? All done. Okay, cool, thank you. Can I get some knuckles? Boom, good job. Okay, love you. I went a different route with Mr. Boba Fett. And let me explain the method of my madness. So a lot of you know I'm a big fan of Bondo plastic metal. This stuff right here, it's a body filler. So the reason why I like this, one, it's in a pre-mixed ready tube. If you've ever used just the regular Bondo filler, the polyester filler, this stuff, okay? This just your regular Bondo body filler. It's cream, it has the red or blue hardener, what ends up happening? Pop some on some cardboard or in a dish, you squeeze out some red hardener, you mix it, you put it on, it starts to clump up, it starts to harden too quick, and then you go to sand it and it's a huge pain in the butt. Why is that? Reason is, 99 times out of 100, nobody measures the hardener properly. This doesn't need a ton of hardener. Some people don't use enough hardener, some people use too much hardener. The beauty of this is the hardener is pre-mixed, has a lower shrink rate, it needs a catalyst, so a reactor or an activator. This is a separate hardener or an activator. This is mixed in. The catalyst here is when it's exposed to oxygen, that is what causes everything to cure. So this is, re it's reliant on oxygen, whereas this, because it doesn't have that hardener in there, it will never cure the right way. It will never fully harden. Now, if you leave the top off of this, eventually everything will dry out and it will harden, but it's not gonna harden the right way. What I'm getting at is most people struggle with Bondo body filler because they use the hardener the wrong way. First, you know, I started getting into using Bondo body filler. I, I never measured. And if you put too much on, this sucks to sand. This in theory, is more durable because it actually has pieces of aluminum. So as far as durability, if you're starting to, if you're trying to add hardness or some rigidness to your model, this is gonna be a lot better. Just because it's all polyester, if your model flexes or anything, it's just gonna crack. You cannot cake this stuff on. This, you still shouldn't cake it on. However, if you do, it is going to have less flex and it's less likely to crack because it's more rigid. It's gonna firm up your model. So this is why I like this stuff. In all reality, do you get more product out of this than this? Yes. Answer this question for me. The last time you used, you know, body filler, when you, you know, put that in your bowl or your dish or whatever, did you use all of it? The answer likely is no. It's probably hardened and you end up wasting it. With this, I never waste it. I use every last drop. Just to show you, the last time I used Bondo body filler, just the plain stuff like this, look it, look what's all in the bowl. That's wasted money, that's wasted time, that's wasted materials. You, that won't happen with this. Keep this in a cool spot, keep it in the house, don't keep it anywhere where there's heat because it will turn into a rock. But you start from the bottom and squeeze this out just like toothpaste and you end up getting something like this. So to get back to the method for my madness, I just went and covered this whole thing with Bondo plastic, metal okay it actually sands pretty easy i am going to hit this with my palm sander in 180 and knock all these pla lines down ask yourself you know is it worth it to sit there and do filler primer sand filler primer sand filler primer sand you would be going five six rounds and still not getting rid of the pla lines and usually what happens is you end up caking it on it doesn't fully cure and then when you get to painting, you get wrinkles and frying. And these are the things that happen. I know because I was there and I've stopped doing it and I have a lot less gray hairs. We got boba covered. I actually did this last night. Glazed donut look here. Um, I am, I'm already sweating, so I might as well sand this thing. It's 7,000 degrees outside, um, but I'm going to sand this down with 180. Show you guys how it looks. All right, so here is Boba post sand, and realistically, this did not take that long. Hour and 15 minutes, and I actually had to put a little bit more on top um, just to fill in some of these deeper defects here. I was using a sanding stick and my wallet, 
80 grit and 120. I had some 180 and I had some 220 and I had a bigger piece of 220. I don't know where it is. Oh, four stages of sanding, but this thing is incredibly smooth. Uh, most of the layer lines are pretty much gone. However, we're not done. Realistically, after this stage, if you want to, you can get into doing filler primer. However, me being me, I'm not doing that. Moving on to glazing putty. Let me use the rest of this. I'm going to wipe this whole helmet down with isopropyl, get all the dust off. You've knocked down a good majority of the layer lines, but there are still going to be some. 220 and 320 with the glazing putty, and then we'll get into filler primer. But by, by spending that hour and 15 minutes, it's going to give me way better results. You can see how all these lines are getting filled in by that. You know, Wipe this down. We're going to do a single coat of glazing putty. Uh, and then we're going to sand this with 220 and I'm going to show you how it looks. So this is uh, basically after sanding the glazing putty off. I did 220 and 320. Uh, Boba's looking pretty good. We're using fillers and glazing putties to kind of look like it's camo. <laughs> um, and that's exactly what it looks like here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a final wipe on Boba, get him in the booth here, start getting some uh, filler primer on here. That will bring out some of the rises and dips in the filler. I can see some of them right here. They're, they're very small and inconspicuous. Um, some of this will get filled in, some of it will stand out and we'll have to, you know, knock it down with 220 or 320, but uh, ultimately he is pretty darn smooth. Uh, this first coat of uh, primer is kind of just to um, identify some of the defects and then I'll actually show you a little tip how I use two different color primers to identify those dips. Working on boba, I want to give a, uh, a little tip, I guess a sanding tip or a prep tip. How you can identify if you are getting rid of the PLA sanding lines a lot. Now, one big tip I can give is, is do not wet sand, okay? The reason why you don't want to wet sand is one, filler, putties, primer, they are all very porous. So you introduce water, it's a solvent, you don't give it enough time to evaporate, you're gonna run into issues, let's put it that way. Water does take the longest to evaporate versus other solvents like alcohol or lacquers or anything like that. So you really, there's really no reason to wet sand. And I know I've mentioned that in a couple of videos, but you really just don't need to wet sand PLA. Wet sanding is meant for clear coat and that's it. When you wet sand, you make it smooth and you give yourself a false impression that all the PLA lines are gone, but really what you're doing is the the lines are still there you've just smoothed the surface over so when you rub your hand across it it feels super smooth but there's still minor dips and stuff that's why you don't want to go too high on your sandpaper grid and you don't want to wet sand what you do want to do is use um, complete opposite color you notice that i started with a black primer to start with and then what i did you can see now is i have a gray primer over it and i use just the most commonly readily available uh filler primer the rust-oleum now let me explain the method and why I, I do still use this, okay? So what I like to do is I like to put it on, give it a sand, wipe it down, and then throw a, a coat of this primer on, and then re-sand it because that dark primer from underneath will bleed through the top when I start sanding it. Big thing though is I would not recommend starting with the Rust-Oleum primer 
because this is water-based and as I stated, water takes long, the longest to evaporate. The Bondo Filler Primer is actually lacquer-based. So this is lacquer-based. Lacquer evaporates much quicker, three to four times faster uh, than Rust-Oleum. As I stated, the Bondo Filler Primer, you can sand it in about 30 minutes. This stuff, um, you wanna wait at least an hour and a half to two hours. That's just me anyway. If you've ever laid this stuff on thick, you'll know you gotta wait a lot longer than an hour and a half, two hours. Again, because there's water in there and it can't evaporate, so it just keeps everything gummy underneath. If you put this on the bottom and then put this on top, um, you could get into what's called frying, where you get like these little like wrinkly, almost like they look like veins in a leaf um, because you haven't let the solvents fully gas on this. So by putting this on top, it's just evaporating a lot quicker. It's not suffocated by another layer of primer. So I really like doing the Bondo Filler Primer first and then basically just using this as a touch-up agent. So you can see here on Boba how a lot of that black stuff just leaks through um, to the front. And that's that, what that basically tells us is all this stuff here, um, the PLA lines are gone. If you were sanding and you seen anything come out, you'd notice that, okay, it wasn't level, but now it is. So that's why you use it. And it's a perfect example here. You could still see how there were some faint PLA lines even on this face. But now that I've sanded it, you can it's just completely smooth now, so we fill those in. And sometimes what it's good to do is focus on that area and just go back over it and kind of level it down. But you can see how all the PLA lines weren't gone. There were still some faint lines that were still there. But now that we were able to sand that and identify it down, that black leaching through the top, uh, you know, we were able to see that, hey, okay, cool. Now the, the PLA lines are gone. It's nice and smooth. This has been sanded with 400. Um, it's pretty much ready for its last, uh, you know, last coat of primer also too on the uh you know on the small pieces here these were pretty good um because i got i mean these are, are you know really intricate but you can still see here how it's identifying those pla lines so um like i said this is all completely smooth had i not gone over that there would be some minor pla lines here but you know even on these pieces here these were generally pretty smooth i mean there's a couple you know small spots here and there where i, I it identified some pla lines probably on the range finder was the most you can see here how there were all these dips here and then by sanding that pretty much leveled all that off so um same thing here you can see how it's identifying all those pla lines so i just kind of sanded it more and now it's just completely smooth uh these all just need one last coat of filler primer and i'll be painting these uh individually i got some cool paint schemes that i'll be showing you guys uh, that i was able to pick up and find i'm gonna let this gas till tonight it's still light outside you can't really oh you can tell right there because the door's open i'm gonna put my final coat of primer on tonight the more time you give your paint to dry, the less likely you are gonna you know, run into issues. I know you guys wanna prime stuff and paint stuff and you only wait an hour or two, but whenever you rush, that's when you, you really, that's when issues happen. So I always give myself as much time as possible, but that's also why I do a couple projects at a time because that way you're not sitting here staring at this thing watching paint dry, like literally. You, you, know, you have other projects you can go to, letting paint dry, letting it gas, letting it cure is the most important step. You could completely go in reverse and have to do stuff all over if your rusher works. So I'm gonna give this guy a couple more hours just to let this filler just kind of gas out. And then I'm going to put the last coat of Bondo filler primer on and give it an inspection and Boba's gonna be ready for paint soon. So uh, let me get this guy primed, maybe do one last final sand. You guys can check out some final shots before paint. Here we go. Here is the, uh, this was basically the final stage you can see. Got some, got some dirty hands. Um, this was the final sanding uh, of, of Boba. I told you I'd wait till it's dark. You can see it's dark. Sprayed this around 8, 8.15. Uh, waited a little bit over an hour. And it didn't take me long to sand this down. Um, you can see that uh, there's no definitive PLA lines anymore. You can see there's a little little low spot right there. When it gets filled in and the underlying primer comes to the surface, you know you, you've done your job. You know, there's like little spots like right there, I'm kind of leaving. Um, there's just certain, certain areas here and there where I kind of didn't sand it as smooth as it could be, so it would kind of look like damage. Uh, like right in here, all these creases a little bit on the top. Understand that I am going to do one more layer of the last layer of uh, filler primer on here And then the paint's going to fill this in a little bit too and then some of the weathering So I don't know how much of this will you know will stand out, but the idea is to show you here that It's completely smooth. Uh, I did 400 grit and 600 grit. You do not need to go any higher than that This is as high as you need to go go any higher than 600. You might run into issues. I don't recommend 
this guy's good and all these small pieces here um, again when you're doing parts like this and you're not really seeing any of that underlining primer come to the surface that's good but now here so to show you that you're filling in PLA the gray was the underlining all the stuff that's black has been filled in so we still had a lot of um, the unevenness and PLA lines on the sides here that now are filled in by that Bondo filler primer. So this is a, per, a prime example of what you're looking for when you use that light coat underneath and that, that dark coat on top. You can see how it's now been filled in. And things on the sides here, range finder, all these things here. This is super smooth now. All this stuff is filled in. Same thing here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to open the door, get the fan going. Um, I'm just gonna wipe all, the, there's a bunch of dust. I'm gonna get all that dust out of here. Do that final coat, uh, give you guys a final look at Boba, what he looks like. And that's gonna pretty much wrap up for part one. So I'm uh, gonna get this final coat on, give you my final thoughts. And the next time you see Boba, he'll be getting a paint job. That's it guys, uh, that was the whole process of smoothing out boba. Had a lot of uh, a lot of tools there that I'm sure some of you guys have used, uh, but hopefully some of the tips and tricks that I mentioned, uh, maybe the DA sander with the interface, uh, the specific grits, the process, what I did. Threw a little bit of curveball, started using that uh, plastic metal, uh, and it actually really does sand down pretty easy. I know some guys use wood filler, which I cringe over. Uh, some people use resin, which I'm, particularly not a fan of. I like the plastic metal. You know, I explained to you why. Uh, I encourage you just to try it once. It works great. It really does. It sped up the whole process, really made things a lot easy. Uh, utilize that glazing putty, which I've always used and a lot of you guys use it. But I'm telling you, try it. It will not let you down. It easily saved me five to six rounds of doing filler primer sanding, filler primer sanding. And that just takes so much time. And like I said in the video, if you get into doing that many coats of anything liquid, you don't give it enough time to dry. It could just, you could backpedal and kind of start all over. Really try that method with the, uh, the the plastic metal there. It's readily available. I'll also leave some links in the description for you guys who can't go out to the stores and get it. You can pick it up on Amazon. Great product. I've got plenty of it here. Use it all the time. Fantastic product. I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you're a subscriber to the channel, especially, thank you so much for your support, for your viewing. Hope you guys are liking the channel. If you did like this video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. If there's anything I didn't cover, something that was out of place or I didn't explain properly, leave me a comment. You know I will reply back. If you're on the Discord, go ahead and drop me a line there. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. I will be more than happy to answer anything that you may have a question on. If you're not a subscriber and you enjoy all things 3D printing, DIY, Marvel, Star Wars, uh, Disney, my kids, free stuff and giveaways, go ahead and click that subscribe button. We're gonna have a lot more, a lot more giveaways, a lot more content. You can kind of see in the back there, War Machine suit, didn't give up on it. Gonna have some updates for you there. A little bit of a sneak peek. Should I give you a sneak peek of Boba? That's all you get, that's that's all you get. Part two, to see my whole painting process. I got a lot of cool, fun things that's gonna be going on with that. That's it for now, guys. I'm out. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Until next time, we'll see you at part two. DW out, later. Mm -hmm.